First of all, congrats on your new PowerBolt 250. I'm here to show you how to install this little guy quickly and easily on any standard door. This door is already drilled, but if you're drilling a new door, use our quick set template and door prep instructions, which you'll find at quickset.com slash door prep. If you're not drilling a new door, you're gonna wanna remove your old lock first. Most locks consist of the deadbolt and the strike. So I'm gonna go out on a limb here and assume your old lock does too. You can remove both of those with a Phillips head screwdriver. The installation will only require five steps. So let's begin. Step one is the latch. Hold the latch in front of the door hole like this with the latch face flush up against the door edge. Now, if the rectangular shaped hole is centered here in the door hole, no adjustment is needed. If the rectangular hole is not centered in the door hole, rotate the latch face to extend the latch. You can now attach the latch to your door using the two corresponding screws packaged with your PowerBolt 250's latch bag. There are two extra screws that are longer in case your door is a bit worn out or needs a little extra support. Oh, that was thoughtful. Thanks, Quickset. Step two, the strike. The latch needs the strike in place to be complete. To install it, use the two longest screws provided in the latch and strike bag. Again, if your door holes are worn out, you can use the extra pair of longer screws. All door holes welcome. Come one, come all. Step three, the exterior. To attach the exterior keypad, first make sure that this flat blade piece in the back is in the horizontal position. And make sure that this cable goes underneath the latch you just installed, like so. And through there, voila. If you have a smaller one and a half inch or 38 millimeter door hole, you're not gonna need the ring around the flat blade piece. You can recycle it or give it to, I guess, a friend. If they ask why you're giving it to them, don't explain. Just give them a look where it's like, take this and remember that I gave this to you. Next, you use the two long mounting screws to secure the mounting plate. That flat blade and cable that went under the latch will also go through the mounting plate here like this and like that. Cool. And you see that resting place at the bottom of the mounting plate? Keep the plate parallel to the door edge to ensure that the top indicator is pointing up to the top of the door. So let's install the mounting plate. Make sure to leave the bolt in the extended or locked position to install the interior assembly. Now, rotate the turn piece so it faces up. You'll hear a click when it's in place. That's the sound of success. When your kid or your future kid or someone else's kid asks you, what does success sound like? Now you have an answer. Then remove the cover for the interior, like so. Connect the cable to the interior, like so. And ensure that it's a tight connection. Now route any excess cable around this notch on the side and here at the bottom of the interior. Nice. That's smart, isn't it? I mean, some engineer got a raise for thinking of this. Or a nod of approval from Mr. Quickset. Or Mrs. Quickset. Or both. I'm not sure who was on the floor that day. Anyway, at this point, you'll see that the flat blade piece can be inserted into the turn piece to complete the interior assembly. Now, using the two mounting screws, you're gonna attach the interior to the mounting plate that you secured earlier. One screw there. Step four, the AA batteries. You'll need to keep the door open and the latch in the locked position while inserting the batteries. For best results, you're gonna wanna use new, non-rechargeable alkaline batteries. Step five, add your user code. Once the batteries are in, you're ready to choose and add your user code. This step is easier than you might think, both the choosing and the adding part. I personally chose, well, I don't know if I should tell you what I chose because I use the same four digit number for everything, but it's 2244. Just please don't, look, I'm trusting you. Start on the interior by pressing the programming button here on the interior chassis just below the battery holder. While programming, 
If you don't push anything for five seconds, the system will time out and you'll need to restart the user code programming process. It's not a big deal. It's not the end of the world. Think of your next programming as a new beginning. What will you change? Who will you become? To program, hit that programming button, then press one, followed by the quick set logo, then whatever user code you want. It can be four to eight digits long. So here's my two, two, four, four. And then hit the quick set logo button again to confirm your user code. After the first user code is set, the latch bolt will automatically retract and extend to learn the locking and unlocking direction of the door. That's cool, isn't it? Look, mother, it's learning. The quick set button will indicate success or failure. If it flashes red, check your battery placement and interior steps one more time before trying it again. Flash is green, you're good to go. From now on, entering your user code unlocks the door. You hear two beeps and the lock button will flash green as the deadbolt retracts. To lock the door, it's as easy as pushing the lock button. All you need to do now is snap the battery cover into place and you're done. And there you go. Your brand new Powerbolt 250 is ready to go. For more instructions on how to add a one-time user code, set up the auto lock, change the programming code, and other nifty features, see the instructions packaged with your Powerbolt 250 or go to quickset.com. But please don't show up at my house. I trusted you with that code.